Well, the United States Congress has slammed South Africa's decision to host military exercises with Russia and China. On the 21st of February, a bill was introduced in the House of Representatives of the U.S. Congress. And that bill is calling on the Biden administration to conduct a thorough review of U.S.-South Africa relations. Now, if the bill is passed, the U.S. will be mandated to take quite a strong stand against South Africa. Professor John Stremlau, an international relations expert at Wits University, joins us now for more on this. And Prof, thank you so much for your time uh, and uh, joining us right here on ENCA. I mean, when you first heard of that uh, call or that proposal by the uh, Republican Congressman John James of Michigan, uh, stating that President Joe Biden needs to reconsider or review rather, you know, the relations shared between the United States and South Africa. What first came to mind? Uh, did the congressman actually have a, a reason or a point to present to the president? Well, I can't speak for the congressman, but there are only uh, about uh, five uh, uh, moderate Republicans who sponsored this uh, request for review. And it's important to note that under the U.S. Constitution, foreign policy matters are for the president, the executive branch, to handle. So they don't uh, tread uh, on that uh, uh, separation of powers very uh, heavily. And it reminded me of the Malign Russian Activities Act in Africa that caused uh, a good deal of uh, concern among African governments. But in fact, it went nowhere. It went nowhere in the Senate. And Biden assured uh, Cyril Ramaphosa it would not see the light of day. This uh, resolution, I don't think, could even pass the House of Representatives, frankly. But it does uh, speak to some of the concerns that some congressmen have about the uh, military uh, training exercises that are going on off Richards Bay and Durban uh, as we speak. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Uh, what are those concerns? Why is it uh, more of a concern for the United States to see you know, China and uh, uh, Russia, those joint military exercises out in KwaZulu-Natal? <laughs> well, you have to figure out who's speaking. Um, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, uh, gave an interview uh, that Reuters picked up and our papers picked up here, where he reminded uh, the world that he and President Biden understand that the Soviet Union assisted the anti-apartheid struggle at a time when the U.S. was allied with the apartheid regime down here. That's history. Is it uh, the fact that today... Um, uh, South Africa is taking a, quote, non-aligned position with regard to the invasion of Ukraine, which is a violation of sovereign equality and territorial integrity. Well, when the U.S. did so in 2003 against Iraq, Nelson Mandela, no less, immediately before it even happened, condemned any temptation to do that. And then Thabo and Becky, within a week, also gave a scathing uh, indictment of it. Now, uh, I can see that there may be a possibility under the BRICS arrangement, that is to say, uh, South Africa is hosting this summer the meeting of India, Brazil, uh, China, Russia, and South Africa, the BRICS. And there may be uh, some legs to the uh, proposed peace plan that the Chinese just tabled a couple of days ago. It, it's, it's hard to know because the plan is very vague and whether Putin will see the light and decide that he's got to concede some things like uh, that uh, Ukraine wants to have a future with the European Union, not with uh -huh. Mother Russia. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, it, it's a little premature to pass judgment on these military relations uh, that are going on right now as we speak until we've had a little bit of historic perspective on them. Right. Uh, Prof, we haven't yet heard any confirmation from, you know, the uh, White House on whether or not President Joe Biden has agreed to uh, consider this review by Congressman John James. However, I, I just want to pick your brain here. Uh, should it be reviewed? Should it be considered by the president? What does then this mean for South Africa? What kind of a stand uh, would the United States take against South Africa? Well, <laughs> the policy reviews within the executive branch, and I, I speak from some experience on this, because I was in government when the Cold War ended, 
and it's a day-to-day -day process that is constantly being updated in light of unforeseen circumstances like the collapse of the Berlin Wall. And uh, what, what, uh, what Blinken suggested was that uh, there has been a review, uh, an extensive review. Indeed, uh, Kamala Harris and, and Joe Biden issued a statement uh, at some length during the campaign on their policies toward uh, Africa and toward the African diaspora, which is sizable and growing very rapidly within the United States. So this is a key constituency for uh, Biden and Harris, and they uh, are very sensitive. Uh, surely there was a, a complete review in advance of uh, President Ramaphosa's visit in December to, uh, to, to Washington and his meetings with Joe Biden. So uh, it, it, it's a phony exercise for the Congress to beat their breasts. On the other hand, they do have the power of the purse and they mm. could raise questions about the extension of AGOA in 2025, but that's a long way off right now with elections here and elections in the United States in the meantime. No. And uh, uh, Prof, with that being said, uh, are you of the view that South Africa might be caught between a rock and a hard place, almost in a catch-22 phase here? Um, because, I mean, when I read the statement uh, by the United States, not only does it talk about uh, obviously asking President Joe Biden to review uh, its stand uh, or rather with South Africa, but it further says that they reject you know, the uh, military exercises with the People's uh, Republic of China and Russia and call for its cancellation, instead asking South Africa to rejoin the United States-led exercises. So it seems once again uh, we're seeing the United States here uh, uh, sort of telling South Africa what to do, further even saying, Prof, that they still call for South Africa to publicly denounce uh, Russia and, of course, uh, the war that we're seeing out in Ukraine. Almost says, South Africa, you need to take a stand, but a public one at that. Well, again, uh, I hate to belabor the point, but who is making this complaint? Mm. Four Republican moderates in the House who have no standing at least the malign activities in russia uh, and, and uh, malign russian activities in africa act which no went nowhere did have the backing of the house foreign affairs chairman and it did pass uh, overwhelmingly the house of representatives this bill that is 148 hr 145 which i've read is 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 not only uh, a, a fool's errand it it, it means nothing it, it, it politically in terms of, of the immediate consequences on U.S.-South African relations. There is perhaps a, 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 a growing concern about South Africa's so-called non-aligned policy as uh, this war becomes more and more horrific for civilians in Ukraine and military assistance ramps up from the NATO powers once the Ukrainians had shown their tenacity to fight for their national self-determination. So, you know, that's that's a question which is constantly being reviewed by mm. the South African government, presumably, and by the U.S. government. And we uh, uh, should follow these things, and I'm glad you're reporting on it, but I would not put too much stock in H.R. 145, the, the bill that, that right. uh, you're, you're the subject of this discussion. So just lastly then, you're saying South Africa has no reason to be concerned? about the bill mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, the south africa has a great deal of consider, c concerns about load shedding and about the capture <laughs> of of state enterprises uh you know it is going through a domestic political crisis that w will shape its ability to have a voice on the international stage and once they come to terms with that once we come to terms with that then we'll reassess what foreign policy means but for in the short term um, uh, it, it, it's uh, a wait and see for me, uh, but I'm glad you're covering this uh, Im important issue. And I'm glad you spoke to me about it. Professor John Stremlau, thank you so much for your time. International relations expert from Fitz University.